Welcome to Wining and Dining with Jim White. It's the program devoted to introducing you to the people behind the eats and drinks you love. One of our favorite people joining us now, Jean-Charles Boisset from the Boisset Collection. Uh, wine is at the heart of your universe, but it expands so much broader than that. It's, it's sort of the art of living. It's, it's gourmet products. It's wonderful artisan products. It's wines. It's spirits now. It's it's everything. How do you keep up with all of well, this? Well, it's all about you. It's the same. You are everything, Jim. So we, we thrill to be able to really provide everything which goes on the table mm -hmm. and maybe on your body as well. As you know, we love the senses and this is what it's all about. It's about allowing our guests, whether it's wine, whether it's spirits, whether it's perfume, whether it's candle, whether it's the sense of touch to be part of our world and that alchemy of senses is what allows you to really get to know someone and someone to get to know themselves. And that's what fascinates us. Well, speaking of alchemy, how appropriate, there just happens to be a new book also that you've released, The Art of the Alchemy. What do you hope to accomplish with this book? Well, through five acts, very similar to a theater, mm -hmm. engage the reader to have a very interactive experience with themselves. Mm. And as they turn the pages, they dive into their five senses that we know, and then obviously the subconscious one, and really discover themselves as well as wine, as well as a certain joie de vivre, as well as what they need to discover, may wish to discover, may wish to you know, venture into, i.e. pendulum sourcing and energy or the sense of sound or the sense of taste or the sense of touch. And I love the book. This has been my dream to do for the last 30 years because it's an interaction. I love paper. I love the traditional side of books. Mm -hmm. So the readers will be welcome with a lovely velvet case. Mm. They will open it. The book is red and deep and a powerful color. And the first page is all about the leopard feel embossed. And then you start your journey. It's amazing through all of the senses, but plus there's some technical information in there, I suppose, if, if somebody is a wine geek and wants to have a little more information about your fabulous wines, uh, be they uh, Raymond or Buena Vista or... Uh, you yes, know. there is some information mm -hmm. for sure, but the goal is not to be as descriptive about ourselves, but rather our senses. We give examples uh -huh. and we showcase some insane recipes. As an example, you know, we ask you to think about if it was your last supper, huh? what would you serve as far as the food? What would be your sequence? What would you serve as far as your wines? And who would you invite? Who is not your brother, your sister, your parents, or your children? <laughs> so you have to go on to another dimension of thinking. The whole idea is to push ourselves in this book, and this is why I really had so much fun doing it. We brought a lot of art artists to design icons, posters, images, as well as did a lot of interactive pop-ups in the books, including mirrors mm. and fabrics and textures. As an example, Jim, you're an expert of sensing the expression of the nose. Let's say the floral, the fruits, the vegetables, or whatever is in nature. So we invite you in a double page to discover 12 of the flavors that we think are critical to wine. One could be vanilla, one could be leather, mm -hmm. one could be licorice, one could be strawberry. And you pull out, out of a little envelope, the little flavor, you smell it, and then on the next page you can discover it. Ah. Another thing you love, and I know you've done that at the wineries as well, is the sense of touch. A lot of the words we use in wine, like velvety, or mm -hmm. silky mm -hmm. in a secondary dimension is to really imagine what that means as you drink the wines. So we provide you a silky fabric, a velvety mm -hmm. fabric, as well as many others that are included in the book. So it guides you to describe the wines and at the same time materializes in front of you as far as what we mean by this. And I've tested this book with a lot of people, some very intellectual, some not as much, so very much low knowledgeable in wine and they had a lot of fun. Well, see, that's the beauty of it, because wine is so sensory, and wine is so personal, yes. and the tasting of it, and so many people, I'm afraid, feel constrained to taste it and sort of try to operate 
by what the experts have told Absolutely. them. Absolutely. You know? And Jim, as you and I know, we have a lot of experience in that field. An expert is someone who knows how to be wrong with authority. <laughs> so you and I can say to someone, you should identify this in a wine, and maybe they don't, and maybe their DNA is different than ours and they don't see it. And it's not because they don't see it that they should not enjoy wine. So I think in all what we do, we're here to guide people. We need to instill in them a certain sense of inspiration and idea, but they are the wine taster. They don't have to use your words or my words. Our role, I think, is to become an inspiration rather than a professor. My grandparents were school teachers. They taught me an amazing amount of things. But the things I learned the most were through fun, experimental studies I've done with them in nature or in the world that were very practical, and that's when I learned the most. So the book is really meant to be this. I just wish they would see it. Ah, the alchemy of the senses, and uh, that I, I suppose that will be at uh, Fine Wine Shops, uh, fine wine Amazon, shops, we, uh, your we website. Well, we're trying to do it really through our website because mm -hmm. it's a $400 book, ah. so it's not okay. inexpensive. It's a coffee table book, of course. We've produced only a very limited edition of a few thousand. We edited it with uh, Chronicle Books, you know, okay. the famous publisher mm -hmm. out of San Francisco. And our goal vis-a-vis -vis the first book, which is more educational, it's called Passion for Wine with really core things you want to learn in a very fun way. This one is really experiential. For me, I've never seen a book like this in the world. That's why the true raison d'être, as we say in French, the reason to exist, I think is really profound. And there's 25 to 30 people who already got the book this week over the last three days because we just sent an email on it. Really, we're having fun. And in addition to that, we're providing you a pendulum. You know, I really believe in energy sourcing, mm. in magnetic flow, in telluric energy, in cosmic energy. And we give you a pendulum with my chart that I've been using for 40 years now to guide me into magnetism and energy. And this chart is given to you in the book and you can use it and discover your own self with a pendulum. As you know, the pendulum is the extension of who you are. It gives you an indication of what you feel in a very practical sense on a piece of paper or simply in your hand as you use the yes and the no mm -hmm. to confirm or affirm an answer. And uh, we give you a pendulum as well as a tool and as a toy for you to play with and to understand something different that you may not have been acquainted to in the past. Oh. It's amazing. The alchemy of the senses and uh, it Thank sounds, you. sounds like an amazing experience. Well, I cannot wait yeah. to, uh, to share it with uh -huh. you. The book is pretty heavy, so in the mail is how you'll get it. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm waiting on the pendulum. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thinking uh, of Edgar Allan Poe here, I'd rather have the pendulum than the pit. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for telling me that and reminding me that great expression. Yeah. Uh, so, but your, your empire, your realm, mm. your wonderful uh, experience uh, in life, uh, I, I call it an adventure, the Jean-Charles Boisset adventure. adventure. Thank you for saying empire, yeah. but empire is, it's not about power, it's about discovering, it's yeah. about the journey, and I think you said it so well. It's about adventuring into different fields that attracts me, polarize me, magnetize me, and make me both there, like candles, like perfume, like designing a wine glass, like designing jewelry. That attracts me because mm. there's a calling there that I want to materialize. As we all have a calling like yourself, pure, natural at what you do, and phenomenal and fabulous and extremely talented, that's your calling. So. I just follow the direction that comes from above that tells me maybe you want to try this. And so was that same type of intervention from above and, and perhaps a pendulum involved in the I'm development of the, the new JCB spirits? Totally. Let's talk about those. Thank you yeah. for bringing that up. Well, this has been my biggest struggle <laughs> in life. Fifteen years ago, I had this idea coming from Burgundy that we could distill the finest spirits coming out of our wonderful grapes, Pinot Noir Chardonnay, and create something which is so transcendental that it's never been done. Hmm. You know, you want to focus on spirits on the ingredients, and rye or corn or wheat 
are great, but when you think about burgundy grapes, this is the most noble aristocratic expression mm -hmm. and gift of Mother Nature. So my view was, if I'm going to drink something, I want the best. I drink Le Vougeau, I drink Vougeau, Marceau, Chassan, Montrachet, the best wines. Why wouldn't I use the same ingredient for my spirits? Yeah. So I engage our master distiller to really research this idea, and he did a miraculous job, which took us 15 years, Jim, because we wanted to have as a goal a taste which was round, very rich, very dense, very delicate, and very long-lasting with no alcohol flavor. Because alcohol is not pleasant. Mm, mm -hmm. You know, it's not the flavor where you, you want to feel in your That's mouth. That's why people want to throw lemons and lime and 7-Up and stuff and in And all there. that stuff. <laughs> and why, when you could have something so pure. So what we decided to distill it with is infuse the vodka, which is made from grapes right. and from wine, the best element of Mother Nature. What is the best mushroom Mother Nature is giving us? The truffles. For sure. The, the heralded, storied truffles. The, the, mm. the, the <laughs> black truffle of Perigord. So we went to the southwest, actually harvested some truffles, and we just did it 60 days ago, you know, mid-November. Okay. Bring the truffles, you know, not shave them, but just brush them, just to clean them. And through a very unique uh, proprietary system, we let them infuse the liquid in a ah. small tank, six foot of my height, so not a big tank, you know, one meter wide, and very slowly and gently, the truffle, the mushroom, gives the flavor hmm. to the fabric and the molecules of that beautiful distilled spirits. And this is the most refined there is. No one has ever done that, to the point it took us 15 years to figure out. Amazing. But then what we thought, Jim, is let's think about the three elements, right? And obviously the earth is one. What about the ocean? Mm. So yeah. what did we decide to do? We went into the ocean, catch a sturgeon, took the eggs out of it, beluga, and did <laughs> caviar <laughs> infusion. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so this is really something so special. And it was very messy at first. Imagine if you put in a glass even, <coughs> liquid caviar eggs, randomly. You ended up with something very gray, mm -hmm. very algous smell, very iod, and it's very fishy. So we said, how do we get the caviar expression without being too fishy or too much, as if you take a wave in your face and the water comes through your nostril, which is not very pleasant. No. <laughs> so we elected to after years and years of research to find a new system to gently, slowly, and very delicately infuse the eggs into the liquid without dominating the liquid. So the caviar vodka is phenomenal. All the top chefs loves it because it allows them obviously to promote caviar, which is very sensual and very seductive and very ethereal. I mean, it's very ocean and ethereal at the same time, those black eggs. So it has been phenomenal because you could have your martini with no need of adding anything. I suggest both of them stir gently into a shaker, if you wish, or a container, and then you serve it neat, mm. delicately, and you sip it, and you're going to have an energy on your palate that is so phenomenal. Again, I use the word sensual because those spirits is all about sensuality. It's about seduction. It's about refinement. It's about sophistication. Again, it's not the spirits you're going to blend with your cranberry or orange or, or trying to cover the low end alcohol. We went very high end. So there's only 4,000 bottles of each. Mm. And that's the idea is to be very estate driven in a way and to provide for the people like you, a true hedonist that you are, a true appreciator of the finest things, something refined, something sophisticated that has never been known in history. And the and reaction, I'm assuming, is incredible. quite positive. Extremely positive because, you know, it takes a while to explain, as I'm just doing, because people don't get it at first. They say, well, you put the eggs in the tanks, you distill grapes. I mean, what the is all that about? sturgeon are swimming in there, and they're distilled, <laughs> and you, <laughs> you right. catch them and <laughs> plop one in a glass. There you go. Well, luckily, we <laughs> smoked the sturgeon after extracting the eggs, so it's a beautiful dish, too, like smoked salmon, ah, yeah. smoked sturgeon. <laughs> 
But which is cool is we did a pure vodka as well, the classic, which is great. So it's Pinot Chardonnay. So if you take people through a tasting, they really understand your thinking, the rationale of your thinking and your intellectual approach to it. And the easiest was when we created the gin. Same alcoholic base, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, wine distilled. Then we added the juniper mm -hmm. for around 45 to 50 days in the tank, in bulk, maceration, gives that beautiful London dry gin feel. Then added the nine biodynamic plants we have in our vineyards, which we use in our vineyards for the organics, which are nettle, yarrow, chamomile, etc. Mm -hmm. And little tea bags, very similar to your tea infusion you'll do at home, take them out and then added 34 organic plants that you could find in a pharmacy and we threw in the tanks. And those plants added a dimension of complexity, a floral expression, a depth, a natural, from nature, feeling that has never been done in gin. So we have beyond Monkey 47, which claims 47 plants, we have more. And they all come from our around uh, surroundings in the vineyards of Burgundy. So it's very powerful. The gin, you know, and many people are great gin drinkers. There's a big following on gin. It's amazing how many letters we've received uh, or emails, I should say, and, and Facebook comments saying we love that gin. It's never been done before. And what I love the most as well is a lot of people tend to tell us, don't spoil the gin with low end bitters or low end tonics, be very careful on the tonic you select. So we're really recommending the people to enjoy those drinks as sipping, not just drinking and, and being delicate about it and having a very gentle, progressive approach. And it has been really uh, a, a great exploration. Again, an audacious journey because I could not see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, Jim, I was tasting those things every year because there's only one harvest a year, mm, yeah. and failing. I'm saying, how could we miss it? What are we missing? And you know, you distill, you're done. There's no way to come back in time. It's like when you've blended something, it's blended. So it, it was um, a very patient exercise, but I'm so glad we did it because we promote fine wine, we promote Burgundy, more importantly even Côte d'Or, which is that very tiny area within Burgundy, we promote the artisanal approach of slow distillation and pot distillation. We promote uh, as well the addition of ingredients that have never ever been played with, with wine or spirits, except in the plate. So it's a very deep um, extrapolation to the world that we did not know. And that's what I love to do in life is audaciously go into the tangent of where I feel uncomfortable and I don't know. You know, it's like when I was a bachelor going to those two girls at the bar, I know they would reject me, but I gotta try. <laughs> <laughs> you never know until you try. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was not that successful. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's talk about yet another adventure. Yes, of course. The fabulous historical Oakville. Yes, uh, oh, oh, yes, yeah. thank you. The wonderful well, Oakville store. Well, you know, it's very... Grocery, I'm sorry, Oakville Grocery. Yeah. Indeed. They know, but we store, always call it grocery. Oakville Store, whatever. Well, and it was the, the post, yeah. it is mm -hmm. still the post office, it is yeah. the, the, the downtown of the town, it was as well the train station in the early 1900s, so you're right, it, it was everything from mercantile to gardening equipment to everything you could find in Napa. My passion, as you know personally, is America, American history, American people, American way of life. So when I first came, you know, to Napa Valley was for Buena Vista or for the missions with my grandparents and we toured Buena Vista and I loved it. The second time I came, my grandparents were not there. I was with my parents and my sister. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget, we stopped at Oakville Grocery. We have a family picture that I need to show you. We all lined up in front of the grocery and we took a picture. And we loved it. We went inside, we bought produce, my mother cooked. We bought the little jam, the tapenade, the, the mustard, the, the obviously sourdough bread, which is mm. so San Francisco. We had a memory and the memory was indelible in my mind. And I've always loved it. It was a great wine store. I used to go and buy wine there to understand Napa Valley better. 
And, um, you know, very fortunately, uh, knowing Leslie Rudd and his daughter, uh, Leslie sadly passed away and, you know, his daughter said to us, I may not want to continue, are you interested? And I said, yes. Hmm. What you call in America into a New York minute. <laughs> I said, yes, because this fits so much who we are. Mm -hmm. History, ingredients, food, wine, lifestyle, destination, and the American heritage. So what we're doing with Oakville Grocery, you know, again, we, we announced the acquisition January 3rd, so it's very recent, but we're going very fast to make it a very strong, sustainable, organic, and biodynamic commitment in terms of food and all the ingredients we use in the kitchen. Because we have prepared salads, we have sandwiches, pizza oven, and everything. You could sit there, li literally look at the Makamas Mountain, look at Opus One, Mondavi, and the history of Napa Valley, and you write there. So we really actively, uh, going back to the source, remember the great philosopher Lao Tzu, think about the source. Mm. And that's what we're doing, the reason to exist. I think in life, everything needs to happen for a reason. You're very talented at what you do, from interviews to radios to TVs, all the things you've done, you had a reason to be there, and there was a reason for you to be there. I think in America today, there has been a very strong progression on fine food, fine wine. People are really engaged into it. It's our role with Oakville Grocery tomorrow to engage the guests on thinking of what they eat is who they are. In other words, making sure they focus on the ingredients, right. how they grow, where they come from, and healthy living. You're a very healthy gentleman, and you've lived a very healthy lifestyle, you know, balanced and even though we could all be excessive with wine and spirits or whatever, you are healthy, balanced. And it's important that we as well communicate that to our guests. And we think it's essential to, in addition to this, bring to the world that certain sense of health of food, health of wine, and the meaning of food at mm. large. That's the idea for us is to make sure that, you know, first and foremost, we've developed a chart which Oakville Grocery will be representing 70% of West Coast products, 20% if we cannot find on the West Coast in the US. Mm. And we're only allowing 10% of the store assortment to be imported. We want it to be very centric on America. And as a Frenchman, you know, we've developed great food in France, great cheese. We already have Atelier, which is our other gourmet shop. I was going to ask you if there's synergy between well, these two yes locations. Well, yes and no, because okay. Atelier is very focused, yes, on U.S. Mm -hmm. products, but very much as well on Italian and French mm, and okay. Spanish products, from sardine to tuna to smoked salmons to foie gras, of course, to caviar, to all that. So we want Oakville Grocery to be very true to the American spirit, mm. to the exploration of the past, the present, and what America stands for in the future. So I'm very bullish, obviously, as you could tell, about it because one, we have one in Oakville, and there's another one in Hillsburg, that really magical, very foody town in Sonoma. So we're gonna have a lot of uh, great exploration there, and we certainly wanna expand and bring it to other cities, not only in the US, but around the world. Mm -hmm. So we want Oakville Grocery, 1881, forgive me, to be, to be understood as a true American vision of fine foods and fine ingredients. I think that's delightful. Thank you. And uh, your commitment to sustainability and yes. organic and biodynamic. I don't think a lot of people understand that that's not always uh, the easy route to no. take. Uh, that that could be the, the the prime description of of uh, you know the ro the road not taken or the road. Which know. is really crazy when you mm -hmm. think about this in the world. You know, we used to do everything organic and biodynamically, pre-19th century, mm -hmm. before synthetic products, before all the invention we've created. A lot of those is to make our life easier, but not the life of Mother Nature. Mm. Our life is easier and create that eight to five or nine to six schedule, which is not the schedule of Mother Nature, as we know. So <coughs> it was very important for us to realign the priorities of Mother Nature with us and not our priorities, but her priorities. She is our best friend, but she's the most powerful of the two. She dictates what we should be doing. 
So we want to eliminate synthetic products. We want to eliminate artificial products. We want to eliminate GMO because they end up to be in your body and we all know what they do. Mm. The consequence, we're leaving all of it in the hospitals, at the, at the doctor, and with all the pharmacy we have to take. So we need to be serious. I mean, we are what we eat. What you take in, you partially take out. It stays with you. Right. Sadly and often, the bad things as well stays with you. So the issues of where we went is excessively in one direction to simplify our life. Modernize it, and I'm not against modern innovation, obviously, and modernization, but I'm not for uh, compromising on Mother Nature. If you give me the responsibility of the vineyard, I need to be true to the vineyard. And if I give you a glass of wine to drink, I want to be able to stand behind it at all level. I mean, afterwards, you like the taste profile or not, it's up to you. But I cannot compromise on the mythology and the discipline in the vineyards that I need to have. Because the bees, the insects, the grapes, the fabric of the berries, from the juice to the pits, to the fibers, to the skin, to the stalk, to the leaf, the photosynthesis has to be perfect, the veraison as well. The grapes have to be well built to give you a maximum of satisfaction and ingredients to feed you. Let's not forget, wine is as well an ingredient as much as food. So we need to be serious. If not, let's do something else. Mm. If people are not up to the challenge of dealing with Mother Nature, don't. There's many other jobs out there. <laughs> That's true. Right? <laughs> so if you do, be true, be real, be authentic. And for me, there's only one way to do it. Sustainable, organic, biodynamic. And biodynamic yeah. and, and being very serious about so many people want to do well, and today there's a great movement, whether it's a good food movement in America, which started in the 50s, which is a great other movement named Slow Food coming out of Italy, to a lot of people wanting to be really authentically uh, in synergy with Mother Nature, in sync, in symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so admirative. And it's not hard to do. It's actually not very hard to do. And to be you know, sustainable in terms of the amount of water you use, as far as using natural energy, all those things that are so important to protect our nation for the future. So, you know, I live by the Bria Savarin tagline that was a very amazing writer and journalist and speaker in the 19th century. Bria Savarin said, tell me what you eat, I'll tell you who you are. Uh -huh. And I believe not that we should account for everything we intake, but we should be cautious because imagine there's only one place things comes in and it better be good. Better be good. And it better be tasteful. A lot of the time, Jim, and I know you and I had that discussion before dealing with wine, but with food it's the same. A food which is constructed is not as great as a food which is natural and which is in season, which is within the rhythm of nature in Seasons, you eat and you should eat what the season provides that build the defense mechanism for your body, that build that great, you know, vortex around you that makes you who you are and that protects you. And this is why eating strawberry in January is not the right time. <laughs> Unless you want to fly them from South America or sure. Mexico. Fine, but the carbon footprint is enormous. And does your body really need it at this time? Your body needs the oranges, the citrus that are coming out that right. you should have in your diet. The same time as in the fall, the potatoes and all the things we do. So nature is so well done that she's already created mm -hmm. the season you need to have in your plate. No need to reinvent the wheel, especially there, with that. Uh, no. You know, the world is so magnificently created. All the painters and sculptures are here to tell us that and to witness whether you like realistic art or impressionistic art or even like me, surrealistic art. Either way, the world is so well constructed. Look at our human body. Look at this machine. I mean, nothing has been created as best as our machine. A robot can certainly not do what we can. No, indeed. So we are those amazing you know, elements, part of the global constellations that we live around, or galaxies. I just think we need to be more reasonable as far as listening, 
as far as not being as spontaneous as far as wanting the impossible. Where we are is what we should eat. And what we should eat is what is produced where we are. Ah. September 2019 marks your 10th anniversary. Oh, thank you. Congratulations so to you and our wonderful friend Gina. Thank you so much. Yes, there's two things happening in September, I'm afraid. Born in 69, September 2019, ah. my birthday. Mm. That's and your the anniversary? the tragic part. <laughs> the, 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 the happy part is our wedding anniversary, for sure. But the tragic part is I'm half a century. This is, um, well, this is exciting in a way because I, I feel always very young and certainly energized to do a lot of crazy things. So I think one of my grandmother's last sentence to me was, remember Jean Charles, never grow old. Mm. You know, always stay the child you are. <laughs> and, and I hope uh, that doesn't change. Our uh, esteemed uh, 41st President George H.W. Bush, I think, yes. had a great saying, die young, as late as you can. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I wanted to just mention, though. Very uh, well said. Yes, isn't it? Very well said. Are you still taking your beautiful girls who are going to be eight this year? Thank you so much. To yes, France indeed. three or oh, four times a year? Oh, plenty indeed. Yeah. So we, we spend a lot of time in the summer. They loved it. Mm -hmm. And at Christmas, we were there. And the hardest thing was to get them in the airplane to come back. And mm -hmm. they love the US, of course, mm -hmm. which is for them, the American or French. They're not Franco-American. I would say they're more, of course, Californian than anything else. But um, they adore it. And I really, uh, I'm grateful for Gina as well, wanted to make sure that those ladies are raised with the two cultures. Because, you know, as much as we could say, we are the best friends ever, the United States and France. Whatever the politics, whatever the regime, I believe we will always be friends because the two of the cultures are so strong together. Mm, true. You know, I always say, my biggest question is, wine separates us, uh, ocean separates us, but wine unites us. Mm. And it's very true. And the ladies, I think today need France. And they love the heritage, the power of the history, the power of the building, the nature, the arts. And, you know, the lifestyle, which is frankly much slower than the pace of America, which is so speedy. And that's what I love about the US. Mm -hmm. That energy that catalyzes you to become something else. And, and I really feel more and more they understand French very well. And uh, they taste a lot of wines, even though they're eight, you know, a little bit of lips mm -hmm. into it. And they're really recognizing more and more a Chardonnay from Sonoma vis-a-vis -vis a Chardonnay from Burgundy. So I'm, I'm loving it. Well, that's, that's wonderful. I'll never forget, since you live in his house, I'll make this reference. Mr. Mondavi mm -hmm. always said that he, he couldn't understand when he went to Stanford why his friends wanted to get drunk. Yes. Because he had always, in his family, been around For the sure. practice that you were describing with yes. your children. Yes. Which is, it's on the table. This is something that I know Very Gina's important. family has Same espoused Gina. for generations. For yeah. generation and, and having the wine at the epicenter of the table, I mean, geometrically speaking, mm -hmm. where everybody looks at it and asks questions about it is important because it is an ingredient, it's a food component, it's a balance, helps your diet, helps your digestion, and help to consume certain sugars in your body. We know that medically speaking. So I think wine as early as you can, for me, the story I want to share to you, Jim, if we have one minute. Of course. We have, the, have all the time. The ladies were born, or baby A comes out. I'm in the room, and I'm drinking JCB 69 and JCB 21. 69 is the rosé. Baby A comes out, and I'm cutting the cord, mm -hmm. very fortunately. And um, oh. I'm drinking and sipping out of a beautiful Baccarat crystal glass, of course. And I'm giving some to Gina, and I'm looking up as the nurse is holding the baby. And I said to myself, she needs a little glass of bubbles. So <laughs> before she had Gina's wonderful production, she enjoyed 69. And for Grace Antoinette, who came second, she had number 21, which is the Chardonnay Pinot blend. To this day, Jim, to this day, the ladies, mm -hmm. If I had the color, one is rosé, one is brut, 
if I had the color, they still recognize the first ring they've had. Mm. So when you talk about memory, when you talk about having an imprint forever, I think those two ladies will forever remember those two wines. And I believe that gave them a great sense. You know, it's a European tradition. You put a little wine on the lips of a child when he or she is born. So I love it because today in blind tasting, you cannot fool them. You can't fool them. It's a wonderful story. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. And it's such a wonderful uh, treat anytime we have a chance to get together with you. And uh, we must come and see you and your beautiful ladies in well, California. Well, we'd love to have you. You know, remember Raymond Vineyards uh, has great tours and blending wine. I'd love to make wine with you. Huh? It would be really fun in our blending room. We soon going to have a blending perfume opportunity. So if you love perfume, you can make in our new shop your own perfume, which will be mm. using the same skills as wine. You don't have to drink it, you could just smell it. Just smell it. And then we'd love to have you at Buena Vista because we've talked a lot about it. We have the museums, we have the historical caves, we have the barrel tasting in the first caves of California. So I think it would be so much fun, yourself and your beautiful bride, to come and visit finally. Well, we will, we shall. And. Uh, this is 2019, a great year for you. Congratulations Happy on year the year Alchemy of Senses. Thank you. And uh, your birthday and your anniversary aye, and aye, aye. all of your adventures. Thank you so much. A votre santé. A votre santé. Merci beaucoup. Yeah. Wining and Dining with Jim White, and thank you to John Charles Boisset. Remember, if anybody asks you what you're making for dinner, tell them reservations. <laughs>